Ice Locked here with Nocturne Gaming, back with more Legends of Eidolon, and today we're taking a look at a sneaking skill guide. Sneaking is a new skill unlocked in World 6, and there are two main sections of the sneaking skill. The first is going to be the sneaking tower, which is where the majority of our interactions with the skill itself will happen. This includes the floors where we decide which floors we want our characters to be on, the ninja knowledge tab, which is where we have upgrades that we can spend Jade on to further our gains in sneaking. And then the loadout tab, which is where we select which items to use for each individual character. The second main section of it is going to be the Jade Emporium, and this is kind of the reward sections for sneaking. The Jade Emporium requires you to collect Jade from the sneaking tower, and then we get to spend it on different bonuses that affect the rest of our game. This could be anything from increases on the MSA totalizer to lab bonuses or more unlocks for the uh, crop depot. Also things like the giant beanstalk and further on down, you have some really good bonuses like new jewels to the lab, new artifacts and ionized sigils. So there are a ton of new bonuses and I'm looking forward to what else is unlocked at later levels. When you first get started in sneaking, there is a lot of information on the floors themselves and all of it kind of ties together. So we're going to bounce around a little bit and try to explain the sneaking tower as best we can. The first thing to mention is the character's progress bar itself. This progress bar is available on any floor that you go to and it shows you kind of three main things. The first is going to be the EXP per hour that you get, the Jade per hour that you get, and the detection chance. The white bar at the bottom is a progress bar, so as soon as that timer hits is when you gain any of these rewards. So currently I have about five minutes left on this and then I will gain the rewards. There are ways in the Ninja Knowledge tab to increase the, or to decrease the progress timer. So you'll be able to get more rewards other than every 30 minutes or an hour or whatever it is for you. So the next thing that this will show is depending on what weapons you have equipped on a character, it can show you the damage that you can deal with your kunai. So if we equip a kunai or a nunchuck on a character, then you can drag and drop it on that character on the door and it'll show you how much damage you'll deal to a door in particular. So that's the main thing about the progress or the UI itself. The other thing is each floor will show you a loot table. The initially will just have question marks on it until you find each of these specific items. But the floor one has three cosmetic hats, a nunchuck that you'll need to be able to break down your first door, as well as two accessories. We'll go over the accessories a little bit more as we get to the loadout tab in just a minute. And there's a few more things to show you. Further on up on, on, the, on the third floor, you'll have access to three new accessories plus a kunai. The kunai is what you will need to equip on your character to be able to untie any of your new characters. So after you use your nunchuck on the first floor to break down a door, on the second floor you'll have your second character that you can unlock using a kunai to untie them. Same thing, you'll just need to go to your loadout tab, equip your kunai to the character that you want to use, and then start working on untying that character. After that they will once they're untied, they become part of the characters that you can use and they'll start out on the first floor or on the floor that you untie them, I'm sorry, but they will be level one. So you will need to go through the process of leveling them up and equipping items to them as well to get them up to speed. Moving on up to the other floors, you'll eventually start getting items that are like these, the, the coin or the target here, that golden eye. These items are golden items. These items give you different bonuses as long as they're in the inventory. So the higher the level of these charms that you can get, the better the, the bonuses are going to be. But I recommend trying to get one of each of these different golden items as soon as you can. Next up, let's talk about the Ninja Knowledge tab. The Ninja Knowledge tab is where you spend Jade, which is the primary currency of sneaking, on upgrading the stats and the maximum level of items that you can find. So there is a little bit of a priority system here, but the real answer is everything in this tab needs to be upgraded based on the amount of Jade that you can find. So as you find more Jade, you'll end up leveling up everything. There is a little bit of a priority system because depending on how much Jade you have, you may have to make some tough choices. 
early, early game, your first priority is going to be leveling up just a little bit of stealth and then leveling up to get the best nunchucks and kunai that you can to be able to break down more doors and unlock more characters as soon as possible. Don't ignore your stealth, but make sure you are getting enough into your weapons themselves. Charms are super important up to about level 75 or 80. And then with the current stage of, of sneaking with only floors one through 12 unlocked, then uh, I've noticed that there's a diminishing returns on the items that we can find and getting past about 83 to 85, uh, past about 75 to 80, I'm sorry, starts getting it to where you're getting like 1% extra gains. So it's not as necessary past about 75 on your charms. Uh, your boxing gloves are only unlocked from floor eight and beyond. So it's not important to put, to spend your jade on leveling up your boxing gloves until you get to at least floor eight. So everything on the left side is talking about upgrading the equipment here. And then on the right side is the stats itself. So back to the priority list to me, the first is always going to be stealth and then upgrading your equipment thing. After that, I recommend bumping up currency conduit. However, don't do this too early as there is an atom, uh, there is a bubble in alchemy that decreases the cost of currency conduit. So make sure you level up that bubble as much as you can first before dumping a lot of jade into this. Kind of on an equal footing to these two stealth and jade conduit is going to be way of haste. This increases your action speed, which is the progress bar that we talked about before. So the more levels you have in the way of haste, the more often you're going to complete your progress, which means you're going to get more jade per hour. You're going to get more EXP per hour, and you're going to find more items by upgrading the action speed. This also affects breaking down doors and everything else. So definitely huge priorities there. After that, my next tier on the priority thing is going to be a split between the sneaking EXP. The bonuses here are actually pretty good, so leveling this up is worth it, as well as your looting ambition. Both of these are equal priority to me, as I haven't noticed a big change in, in leveling up looting ambition, but I do feel that it's worth it to be about equal with the sneaking EXP. From there, the next big priority to me would be Mahjong boosters to increase the damage that you deal to doors and your untie rate. Um, early on, it's going to take you a significant amount of time untying these characters anyway. So definitely spend a few points into this to help decrease that time so that you're not spending two or three days on untying a character. The last ones to mention are going to be the, the thick skin, which increases the time to get back up after you've been knocked up, knocked out. So you'll spend only a few minutes knocked out instead. Um, this does scale quite fast compared to other bubbles or to other knowledge tabs, I'm sorry. Um, so I have not put a lot of points into it, but uh, it could be useful if you're unable to get to lower detection rates. Next up, we have our Ninja Loadout tab, and this is where we select which of our characters get which items. So as you find items in the sneaking floors, they will all come to this inventory, and we do have a few options. First is you can show your per hour display or not. You can hide the loot tables, which will make it where it doesn't show those question marks in the top corner. Um, I recommend turning them on. And then you can also make it delete bad items. Now, this isn't super important at first, but as you get to the point where you have level 50 plus, level 60 plus, and you really have spent a lot of jade into your item find, you'll end up getting a lot of items overnight. And this will automatically trash items that are, I believe, 10 levels or 20 levels lower than the highest that you found, which helps kind of filter out the bad items um, early on. So I turned this off for a little bit so I could find some of these other items that I haven't seen in a while fairly easy, but most of the time at the current level, I do keep trash the bad items off, but I recommend waiting until you start filling up your inventory before you turn on trash bad items. Also, you can show your sneaking levels or not. It's just cluttering the UI for most people, uh, but I do like to see it so that I can make sure my characters are staying in the relative same level range, depending on what they're doing. Other than that, the inventory at the bottom, you, it shows you the amount of jade that you have. If you have trash items lit up here, then if you click on anything, it does delete it permanently. So be careful with that. 
So on each sneaking floor, you have a list of items that you can find in their loot table. The hats are completely cosmetic, and then you can find a nunchuck on the first floor as well as two accessories. In your character menu here, you'll have, each character can equip a weapon as well as two, two accessories. There are three different weapons available in the sneaking tower. The first is going to be nunchucks that you can find on floor one, the wooden nunchuck. Now, granted, this is a very high level wooden nunchuck and it's going to be much, much lower on the damage in for you. However, keep in mind that the numbers do scale like crazy, especially I've noticed after about every 10 levels, it seems to go up by quite a bit. So at level 71, it's dealing 24.2 million damage going up to 86, it's 328 million damage. Uh, I mean, that's a 15 level difference, but it's a, still a significant jump. Now going up to level 96 and we're up to 1.1 billion again. So 10 level jump and we jumped up quite a bit more. Uh, so the higher the level that you can get in your nunchucks, the faster you're going to break down those doors. And then you'll be able to find new tiers of nunchucks later on. The new tiers are going to be the same thing here. So compared to a base level wood nunchuck at 1.1 billion damage, the higher tier is going to give you 15 billion damage for the same level. So as you can find better tiers and, and higher item level itself, the more damage it's going to do. The kunais are going to basically follow the same theory. Uh, kunais are the second weapon that you can find, and the only thing this does is untie new characters for you. Granted, you will need a decent kunai. I used a level 54 kunai to unlock my last character. It did take a while. So getting above about a level 60 kunai isn't really necessary. Um, but the higher level that you can get, the more untying rate that it's going to have. Uh, same thing here, the better tier that you have and better level is going to give you a lot more damage to untying your characters. After that, the last weapon that you can find is going to be gloves. Gloves are only found on floor eight or higher. Uh, there are three different tiers of gloves. The one that I have never found on floor eight and then you also have the um, chainmail gloves and then the thunder gloves. This increases the rate that you find jade and items. So equipping more gloves is definitely going to help you find more jade and items. So that's your three weapons. Now, there are a lot of different charms that you can find. And early on, this is going to be the smoke bomb and the log. And then starting on floor two, you'll have the jade pouch, your first belt, and then the meteor rock. So the smoke bomb is one of the best items that you can find early game. This gives you a bonus to stealth for every other ninja on the same floor. Now, initially you're not gonna be grouping up a lot of your ninjas at the on the top floor because you'll be trying to find items. Maybe they won't have enough stealth. There's a lot of factors, so they won't all be grouped up. Later on, however, you're going to be grouping up a lot more, especially as you get to floor seven, eight, and nine, you'll end up needing these smoke bombs to be able to get enough stealth to keep moving up to the higher floors. So initially, this is only going to be giving you like a 50% bonus to your stealth, um, maybe even lower than that. I think there's items that make this display even higher. Um, so, but smoke bombs, basically you equip this on one character and then every other character on that floor gets an extra bonus to there. Um, the other item that you can find initially is your ninja log. This gives you a chance to not be knocked out if you're detected. So initially you only have a couple options, smoke bomb and a log, and that's gonna help boost your characters up a little bit to get through the first two to three floors. So really quick, let's go through the different items you can find on each floor. On floor one, you can find the smoke bombs that we went over, gives you more stealth for all ninjas on the same floor. Uh, more useful as you get more ninjas. After, also, you can find the ninja log to increase the chance to not be knocked out. On floor two, you can find the goodie bag for more jade coins. This does scale fairly well for extra jade coin games for jade coins fairly early in the game. You can also find the meteorite, which increases your item find chance, but you gain no sneaking EXP. I really recommend this using this whenever you are finding items on previous floors. So say you upgrade your charm levels quite a bit in your ninja knowledge tab, 
You go back to floor one to find more smoke bombs. Throwing on a meteorite or two can help increase your item find and make you spend less time on those early floors. Uh, you can also find the blue belt at this stage, and this gives you more sneaking EXP. Keep in mind for all of the belts that the bonus is tripled if the ninja is the only one on a particular floor. So you can make a good use of this to level up previous characters, or uh, as you unlock new characters, you can level them up easier using the blue belt. Uh, on floor four, we find the scroll of power. This is one of the most powerful items in the game, but it's not super overpowered. Just make sure you're using it. This does give you more sneaking EXP, more Jade coins and total stealth. I recommend this on an archer based character as it looks like the archer characters will end up being um, the characters that get the bonuses when the new elite class comes out towards sneaking. Uh, moving on from there, the next item is going to be Silk Veils. Silk Veils give you a multiplier towards your total stealth. So you have base stealth from the Way of Sneaking in the Ninja Knowledge tab, and then you have a total stealth. The total stealth can be seen in your skills menu um, on the Sneaking tab. It gives you your twin Ninja Twin Stealth. So keep in mind that for each character, the more stealth that they have, the better off those items that give you total stealth are going to, to be. So uh, moving on down the list, you have next up is your green belt, which increases the amount of Jade coins that you gain. Very similar to your goodie bag, except this bonus does get multiplied with uh, the belt bonus. After that, you have the uh, taunting mark. This makes it so it's like a sacrificial lamb. Basically, if a character is using the taunting mark, if one of your other characters gets knocked out, this one gets knocked out instead. So you can make this, you can stack this with like the ninja log um, using the bonus from taunting mark and ninja log together to make it where your characters don't get knocked out as often. Um, after that, we have the shiny smoke and this gives you more jade coins um if your detection rate is zero it does double this bonus so the benefit of this is you can use this on more than one character uh, on the same floor and still get the bonus unlike the jade belts from there our next item is going to be the strange comb and this gives us exp to the ninja with the highest level so i haven't found a personal use for this as i want all of my characters to be leveled up relatively the same to get more farming done on more characters but i guess you could push the envelope with like making your scroll of power ninja have more levels to get to the higher floor sooner but i don't know haven't found a use for it yet um, after that, our next item is going to be the Lotus Flower. The Lotus Flower is the same as the Smoke Bomb, except it gives us more uh, stealth per level. So looking at the Smoke Bomb at a 65, it's 241% extra stealth. And at 66 on the Lotus Flower, it's 423%. So after that, our next item is going to be very similar to the Silk Veil, which is going to be the Rosaries, which gives us a multiplier to our total stealth as well. So this brings us to one of the more interesting points of sneaking. So if you use a bonus that gives you the total stealth, so the silk veil and another bonus that gives you the total stealth, the rosaries, these multiply together. So to give you a basic example of this, we're going to add a rosary bead. Um, we're gonna switch a silk veil over to this character. Um, let's see, what can we do? We'll put a goodie bag on it right now and take a look at our total stealth. Total stealth is 11.9 million. So if we go back into the menu here and we add the silk veil, keep in mind the silk veil is a seven times multiplier. We already have an 11.7 multiplier on it. So we're gonna add the seven times multiplier to it and take a look at our silk veil. And we went from 11 million to 172 million, adding a seven times multiplier. So those two multipliers do multiply together to give us a total amount of stealth that is vastly different compared to what it looks like. So this is one of the interesting combinations. Now, the other thing we can do to increase this character in particular is using the combination of your Lotus flowers with your silk veil and rosaries. So the Ideal setup that I found is using initially starting with three characters and keep adding more characters with Lotus flowers until you get to the number that you need. 
So what you do is you take all 10 of your characters and put them on the same floor. Uh, you can use less characters depending on what you're wanting to do, but go ahead and move everybody up. Uh, give me just a second here. So when you have all 10 of your characters on the same floor, that means they're all gonna benefit from the same bonuses. So all of our characters have the Silk Veil and Scroll of Power on. We'll switch this back so this character, Tim Bob, has my Scroll of Power. And what we want to do is take a look at the amount of detection chance that we have on our best characters. So everybody's at like 100% right now for these three characters uh, because they're only using Lotus Flowers on those characters. But for the other seven characters right now, we have the Silk Veil and Rosary Beads, which is allowing them to get down to 9%. Now, I could add more Lotus Flowers on. So if I go to my, my last character here and add two more Lotus Flowers on and go back to the same character, uh, Ice Locked here, it's down to 5% detection chance. So the more Lotus Flowers you add on, the better off the other characters are going to be. So you need to find the balance for you that's going to give you the most Jade per hour between all of the characters that are sneaking. So at this stage, what I recommend doing is going through and adding up your different characters. Um, taking a look at Ohio here, it is getting 194 trillion Jade, but each of my characters are getting about 26 Q Jade here. So if I take those two Lotus flowers off this character and add my rosary and beads back, ice locked went down from 26 to 24 Q. So I can assume that the other five or six characters are getting that as well, but Ohio went up to 20 Q. So I'm losing 10 Q on the other five characters, but I'm gaining 20 Q on this character. So for me, having the three characters with Lotus flowers is more beneficial than having up to seven characters with Lotus Flowers. Uh, I hope all that makes sense, but basically you can keep using more Lotus Flowers and more Smoke Bombs on all of your characters. As long as you have two to three characters farming Jade for you, you're still going to profit. So as a quick recap and to make sure that we cover a few tips and tricks here before we move on to the Jade Emporium, my recommendation when you first start out in sneaking is to try to move your characters up to the next floor as soon as you can. As soon as you can get them below about a 50 to 55% sneaking chance, you're probably going to be gaining more EXP per hour and more Jade per hour. Focus on leveling up your characters as much as you can because that sneaking per level is kind of the biggest deal that you can get as all of your multipliers are based on that, that base sneaking that you get. So the more stealth that you get from your sneaking level, the better off you're going to be. Um, so keep in mind that the numbers do show, do translate based on the amount of detection chance that you have. So the numbers that you see on there are pretty much the numbers you're going to get. Maybe some slight variations depending on RNG. Other than that, uh, make sure that you're periodically going back to lower level floors to get items as you level up your charms. So the more that you level up your charms, the more that you want to go back to these early levels as they do scale quite high and the bonuses are going to be worth going back for at a periodic, uh, every, every now and then. The other big trip, big tip is that as you're trying to find items specifically, if you're going back and looking for those items, I recommend leaving the sneaking menu open as you're AFKing on a map. Use your quick reference map and leave this open as I did find a significant amount more items while this map was left open compared to checking it once or twice a day. My next recommendation is going to be to not be afraid to spend some time unlocking the doors, but don't spend too much time. My general recommendation is, is if you can break down a door or untie a character in less than 24 hours, it's probably okay to do it. I personally waited till I was less than 12 hours to be, to spend any time unlocking a, a door or untying a character. So my goal was 12 hours or less before I did spend the time on it. And that was using one character to break down the door. As you get to the higher tiers, it may be worth spending two or three characters, 12 hours worth of time to break down a door as the numbers do scale like crazy. To give you an example here, going from you know floor 11 to floor 12, 
it's a significant change. It's a, a 25 times gain in the amount of jade that we're getting, uh, or about a 20 times, I'm sorry. Uh, so about 20 times more jade going up one floor. Uh, so the sooner you can unlock the doors, the better, but also don't spend two and three days trying to unlock a single door. So moving on to the Jade Emporium. The Jade Emporium is basically the reward system for sneaking. So as you get more Jade, you can unlock more bonuses. That's not gonna give you a direct increase to your account as it's going to unlock something else somewhere in the game. So it kind of adds some more bonuses kind of everywhere. Uh, the MSA Expanders give you bonuses to the MSA Totalizer in the World 3 Town. Um, level Exemption gets rid of the underleveled penalty for stamps. There's several bonuses to, uh, there's three new bonuses to the, sl uh, to the laboratory that you can unlock depending on moving your characters to unlock new bonuses. Crop Depot Scientist, there's currently seven of the Crop Depot bonuses that I know of to give you bonuses based on the number of crops you've unlocked in farming. Essence Confetti and Jade Magnetism give you bonuses based on your slab. Gold Food Beanstalk, we went over in depth with our Gold Food Guide. Um, no meal left behind was a really big deal to me as this gives me an extra level on all of my plates without having to spend levels uh, or spend ladles every day. So basically if you can push up your plates to higher levels, you don't have to spend ladles anymore. And in about a year or so, maybe all of your plates will be maxed out. I don't know. Plus one meal every day is pretty awesome. Uh, Revenge of the Pickle was great to give you more uh, kills on your boss death note based on the number of bone joe pickles in your inventory. Keep in mind that there is a penalty on this, so you will need a lot more damage to be able to kill these bosses with too many bone joe pickles there. Um, then we have plus 10 to meals again, supersized beanstalk. Uh, Charmed, I'm sure. This is one of the biggest bonuses that you want to get to as soon as you can. This allows you to equip two of the same item. So you'll be able to equip two Lotuses or two smoke bombs at the same time uh, when you get charmed, I'm sure. This is a really big deal. Um, and then everything else is just going to kind of add to that until we get down to Sovereign Artifacts. Sovereign Artifacts unlocks a new tier past Eldric Artifacts in Sailing. So that's another tier, that's another multiplier for you for more gains everywhere because of Sailing bonuses. A new Critter, so everybody wants some turtles that you can unlock for trapping, and then it just keeps getting better. Three new additional artifacts from the Edge Island, three new jewels that are amazing bonuses and um, that you need to get your lab level up to unlock. Ionized sigils to give you a third upgrade on your sigils. A tip here is keep in mind that if you have all of your golden sigils unlocked, you can preemptively level up ionized sigils for whenever you do unlock this. So you just leave it, leave the four characters or three characters that you want leveling up the sigils that you really want to be unlocked as soon as you unlock ionized sigils. Uh, Ender Captain is a new type of captain you can unlock. And then you, when you finally get down to the 18 QQQ more um, Jade, you can start unlocking cosmetic ninja hats out in the world. So that's the basics of the Jade Emporium. Let's move through the worlds and talk about how to increase your gains in sneaking. So in world one, we have our stamps and statues. The stamps are going to be your sneaky peaky stamp for more sneaking EXP gain and your Jade Mint Stamp for more Jade Coin Gain. Keep in mind that this is a rare drop from Rice Cakes in World 6, so you will need to farm quite a few of those to level up the stamp. For your statues, you do have the Stealth Statue to give you another 270% Stealth. Keep in mind that this is an Onyx Statue at level 134, so it does take quite a bit of farming to level that up. One little reminder that you do need to buy the Golden Statue before the Onyx Statue will upgrade properly, so you will need to spend a little bit of money on that. Also, in World 1, we can take a look at our star signs, as there are three star signs to help us out here. In the Seraph tab, you have the Ninja Twin Stealth bonus here. Uh, you have the Sneaking EXP gain, as well as a 10% Jade gain, which is multiplicative. One thing to keep in mind is keep leveling up your summoning, as the Seraph Cosmos does give you an extra 10% bonus to all of your star signs, based on your for every 20 summoning levels that you have. 
While we're here, let's take a look at our cards and the crystal candlelight gives us an extra bonus to sneaking stealth and it is passive. So the more cards you can find, the better off you're gonna be for your stealth. The Jade or the Leak Spirit gives you more Jade Coin Gain that is also passive. And then the, the Baby Troll gives you more sneaking EXP. All of these are passive, so you just wanna level them up as soon as you can. Moving on to World 2, all of our bonuses in World 2 are from Alchemy, and there are several bubbles, starting with Stealth Chapter that gives you more stealth based on the tone completion points that you have. After that, you have Hinge Buster to give you more damage to the doors while you're breaking down doors, Ninja Looter to give you more item find chance. Keep in mind that this is a large bubble, and if you don't have the uh, Sheepy Pet, you do need to equip this for it to be active. Low Cost Mojade gives you a bonus to currency conduit so basically as you level it up the cost scales slower so it basically makes currency conduit a little cheaper to level up to higher levels for your vials you have three vials that are going to help you out the green leaf tea vial which gives you more ninja untying rate um, so the sooner you can level this up the better uh, refreshment gives you more sneaking exp gain and then royal cola gives you more jade jade coins in sneaking so definitely level up these three vials and there's one last bonus and that is the last sigil which gives you a boost to your jade coins in sneaking i know this only says 50 percent, but keep in mind that you do have multipliers from sailing and other bonuses so this is more like 250 to 300 percent more jade coins by leveling this up to the gold tier of the sigil here in world three you do have the msa totalizer bonuses this is unlocked from the Jade Emporium. So as you level up the Jade Emporium sum, you'll be able to get the 100% extra Jade from your MSA totalizer, depending on the amount of waves that you've cleared. In World 4, we do have a few bonuses, starting with the dinner menu. And this is gonna come from the Frazzleberry for more sneaking EXP. And then the Mr. Loin Steak, which gives you an extra 420% Jade coin gain. This is at a level 70 dinner plate, so it may not be quite as much for you. In World 5, the only direct bonus to upgrade your sneaking is going to be the slab, which gives you more jade gain depending on the jade magnetism that you have uh, from the Jade Emporium. Also in here, I can show you real quick, is the new Sovereign level artifacts that give you an extra tier past Eldrix for each of the bonuses here. And then an indirect bonus towards sneaking is going to be the Winds Lantern that increases the winner bonuses from all of your summoning uh, wins that you do. So which has some bonuses that help sneaking, which we'll go over next. In World 6, we have two major bonuses. This comes from summoning and farming. Um, from summoning, you can get an uh, impressive 25 times more Jade gain, as well as another eight times sneaking EXP. So it's some of the larger bonuses. And then keep in mind that you do have the multiplier from the Wind's Lantern that does not show up here. So it is a significant bonus that you get from having the summoner's table maxed out the best you can. Our last bonus comes from the Crop Depot and Farming that gives us an, an additional 1.4 thousand percent Jade gain, depending on how many crops that you have. This is with all 120 crops unlocked. So I believe it is the maximum amount that is currently obtainable at this time. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button and drop a comment if you're enjoying our videos. And a huge shout out to our patrons. Your support means the world to us. And if you would like to become a patron, check out the link in the description for more details. And be sure to visit our merch store so you can get some pretty cool stuff. If you have any thoughts or questions, let us know down below and we'll see you next time.